Hi, my name is Alan from Hawkdive and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about this application that wants to compete against OBS or Open Broadcaster Software. It's on our live streaming platform or application and it's called the Prism Live Studio. So I've, you know, I've covered articles about OBS in my own personal medium account and over at Hawkdive and as well as this YouTube channel and on my own YouTube channel. And, you know, OBS, everybody uses it from the casuals, beginners, um, those who wants to start streaming, those who are popular in streaming, those who wants to do school works with OBS, record everything, whatever, broadcast, whatever. It is so easy to use and I'm actually using it right now. And um, we're going to be comparing this application against OBS, but I'm also going to highlight the features that this program solely has that OBS does not have. So basically, this is from a company that is called Naver or neighbor from Korea and um, it's cool because in Korea if I'm not mistaken because I did my research um, there's a lot of people streaming there's a lot of people who likes broadcasting and it's a, it's a big thing in Korea as well so let's head on in you can get the application on this site prismlive.com slash n underscore us or just through prismlive.com and as you can see prism live studio there's a mobile version as well um, maybe I can show you this software as well in a couple days but for now let's focus on the OBS competitor so as you can see we've got Prism Live Studio right here it's only available for Windows 10 and 11 there are a lot of easy controls multi-streaming and other different effects uh, that you know this uh, the software offers over OBS so let's download it by clicking the download button once you do going to be popping up with this file currently it's on version 3.1.3.339 and um, i downloaded it four minutes ago you just click that install it you're going to pop up with this software uh, in your desktop of course or icon prism live studio i'm going to open it up and i'm going to taking you to the initial kind of initial opening because this is the first time i'm opening prism live studio as you can see it's downloading the resources uh, available for the program itself and a percent and you're probably asking hey why should i trust you doing this video if this is your first time opening prism live studio because i got you guys i got you anyway first of all the first thing that you're probably gonna see that is different with obs is that you can log into prism live studio with multiple different emails or accounts and you cannot use a program without actually having an account. So the first thing that I want to do here is uh, sign up, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in with my Google account. And this may vary, whatever you want to use. I'm going to do a sign up. I'm going to use my Google account. And then I'm going to be right back to you guys. Okay, give me a moment. So once you actually get into creating an account, uh, this is the first thing that is going to pop up. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things coming out you at once. They can go and actually check out all the guidelines, all the new features, all the help. And there is a Prism's official blog, uh, which is a Medium account that shows you the things that is available here at Prism. So right here, I'm just going to press close. And actually, the whole canvas, if I just go into maximize screen here, it looks almost identical to OBS. So you got your scenes. You got your sources you got your audio mixer but 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 there are a lot more things going on here over just obs as you can see you can also resize this is probably your main window for the canvas but this is what your viewers see but as you can see right here there's a lot of different things i have my studio mode which was on i have my chat I have the alerts, I have a start virtual camera, I have beauty effects, virtual background, drawing mode, prism sticker, giphy sticker, music playlist, connect remote control, all for free. I can also multi-stream using a platform. As you can see on the top right here, we got Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, this one is not familiar, Neighbor TV, View Live. Not too familiar, you can also do custom RMPs. Now, okay, let me walk you through because this might be too much because I've covered OBS. In fact, let me open up a copy of OBS right here. This is my main OBS that I use. And I will show you side by side some um, things. Hopefully this uh this recording doesn't crash. 
because of course opening up pre-recording softwares can be a lot so let me just drag it here this is obs right now this is my main obs as you can see i have the scenes i have the sources the audio mixer and then the controls for the stream now i only have one plugin here called the multiple output so i can stream on two platforms at once let me just do this okay cool and i also do have my chat window right here for youtube and that is about it um it is currently taking up zero zero and then another zero zero for the usage while this app is currently using point one and then point one as well for the gpu so there's already a lot going on as you can see the audio meter isn't as accurate as the one in obs but i'm gonna uh minimize obs for now let's talk more about the application so let's do scenes it's similar to obs literally you can create one and then you can name it whatever scene is like your basic thing here let's name it gaming scene and for the sources we can do add source and there are a lot of different sources this is the main difference in obs but let me pop obs right here and just show you the ad source window that obs had so let me go oh actually i think obs right here would it show would it show give me a moment let me put it right here and press plus okay cool we have um a lot more to the left part a lot more in prism over obs we got webcam we have mic we have audio so we have mic and audio right here with um the application audio capture that is already included on the audio output capture that this one has it has game same with obs monitor capture full part um kind of with obs but monitor capture display capture and obs right here you got window capture if you just want to capture a window web similar with the browser on obs video music similar to image and all but that's cool now this is the prism exclusives we got prism camera we got prism mobile the thing is we can head over to our uh, mobile phone here let me let me just quickly show you look at look at me look at the camera on your screen right now if i actually search for prism uh prism live i think prism live studio it should also pop up on my phone and we might talk about it in the future so i don't know if that's gonna focus up but that is prism live studio this one right here where my middle finger is so i'm just gonna download it might cover it in youtube in a future uh, video or article here at hawk dive so that would be really cool but for now we're going to skip the prism mobile but basically what that does is that it allows you to stream your mobile phone directly to prism you need a plugin for that in obs or use ndi which is also available for this one but let's not talk more about that there are text template let me actually start going into uh, prism now so if we do prism uh, text template right here text allows you to create lower thirds unlike obs there are things that will allow you to put this in obs but not make it directly from the platform you have prism chat which allows you to show all of your chats such as youtube facebook twitter twitch trovo a lot of different all of these on the top on your prism chat now on OBS, you can do an ad source for a chat, but most of the platforms such as Streamlabs and Stream Elements would only allow you to show one. Like if you're streaming on YouTube, it's only gonna pop in YouTube. You got viewer account widget. Also for the multiple platform that you're streaming on. You also have Prism sticker. The stickers, it's really cute. If it's stickers, 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 you can see this mostly on WhatsApp and all in all just gif style stickers that are cute as well you have music playlist that would also show you the actual artwork an audio visualizer which you would need a plugin for an obs same with the music playlist a background template and a clock widget a lot of different things but before we hang to those i kind of want to talk about the settings that we have here at prism so if we go in the settings, the gearbox on the bottom right of the screen, as you can see, I might have to blur that out. But we're gonna, I'm gonna disable the watermark, and then let me go straight to the actual settings. So this is very similar to OBS, but with minimal window right here. So usually I'm just gonna do 60 FPS. We're gonna do a cubic, 
we're gonna do 1080p i want to do an advanced this looks very similar to the framework that obs uses basically kind of the coding style or how they did the program so of course i'm going to be doing uh nvenc h.264 we're gonna stop that we're gonna do 6000 we're gonna do two we're gonna do a low latency performance uh low latency power to stream and cool now we also have the record settings right here i've just got to scroll down looks extremely really similar to obs let me put you up let me show you obs right here on uh let me side by side this this is obs to the right as you can see we have the outputs tab and the stream tab combined uh in in one part or actually the video tab and the output tab right here so as you can see very similar cbr uh bitrate keyframe preset profile we didn't have the multi-pass but that's fine we can also do a record settings which are also in the recording tab right uh right here as you can see let me do replay buffer or right, the recording tab right here the path and it looks almost identical automatically reconnect i usually just do this as we try automatically and the maximum request would be 9999 because i never wanted my stream to get disconnected so i just press apply on that and as you can see you can also bind to ip similar to the settings that on the advanced settings of obs has as you can see right down here so let me just press ok on obs oh, actually let me go audio tab we got the desktop microphone i'm going to disable that we're going to enable we're going to use my microphone right here extremely just like obs similar tab different ui but similar what's in it right so that's cool i like that that is really cool uh very familiar but a little bit of a new breed in a way right as you can see if i go to advanced right here if i go on top go color range let me do the same thing 709 partial and b12 i direct x11 and pretty much the same thing i like that uh, everybody that used obs would very easily get familiarized with this program with the additional features that it has it's basically like streamlabs obs uh hit the thumbs up if you guys want me to talk about streamlabs obs but it is extremely like obs so actually give me a moment let me set up a full uh a full window let me exit out of obs the other obs that i'm not using the record and let me pop in a an application a, a game in the background so that we can record it using prism so give me a moment so i actually opened up a game probably familiar with it let me see if uh Let's show up on screen. There you go. Probably familiar with this game called Tekken 7. But um, let's go back to our Prism Live Studio right here. So now that we have our source, uh, our game source, let me add it right here. So game, I'm gonna press OK. We're gonna do game, we're gonna do Tekken 7. Uh, it might actually just capture it. If it's like OBS, it should be able to capture it if I don't mention what game it is. While Tekken was also loading up, I did a quick search right here, and it tells me that Prism Live Studio used the OBS engine as the core module, so that's why it's very similar. But it has added flair. So as you can see, even on this part, if I pull up an add source right here, game, as you can see, it looked very similar. If I press OK, it looks extremely the same. Capture the full screen, capture the cursor, limit frames. That's literally the same thing. I don't even want to compare it. I did that. I did this. Let's do a. Let's just do specific window for now. Let's do Tekken. And then fail to capture the game because it is currently untabbed right now. So let's do same executable. Press OK. And if I open up Tekken, just press any button. It might be because I'm also recording. That might be one problem. Yeah, keeps telling me that failed to capture the game. 
let me try it one more time with uh with prism live studio on my other monitor so that i can just see if it actually just does not want to capture the game okay i think it is failing to capture the game because i have things going on in you know with this obs as well so that's probably why sadly i'm not going to be able to show you the game but let me just add a source so here i just added a my own game source right here very similar to obs theme things and let me just press ok cool cool that is all cool now what makes it different from obs if it looks almost the same as obs right so right here if i do add source we can do the audio output capture source double click on that press ok press ok and it's only a device the thing with obs is they have now allowed the um again it was it is still on beta version but if i do right here application audio capture i thought it was already baked into this app sadly it is not it is still uh obs but what it allows you to do is you can multi-stream one of the biggest thing is multi-streaming but the other big things that this program allows you is to put the cute little keyfeeds that you have you can add you can loop them you can literally you can literally make a whole edit with just this application on hand the audio visualizer that's okay we're gonna do a for the mic as you can see as i talk this is currently silence now if i talk it creates the audio visualizer right about there of course you can customize the audio visual, uh, visualizer with the width i want it smaller i want the spacing to be smaller as well i want the height to of course uh, the maximum height to be of course smaller by like let's say 50 uh, there you go and then i want to lessen the count like maybe i just want 20 of the the bars and the bounce speed to very high okay oh oh okay mic 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 test okay that's cool and of course you can also mirror the graph make the one that is on the side or center of the screen this is really cool for podcast but you know that's just one of the features we also have scribble or drawing mode basically if you're doing tutorials unlike in obs if i'm doing this tutorial right now if i was using this platform right now and i want to point at something i want to highlight something i want it to you know, like like pay attention to the uh pause the video okay do a pause okay let me okay let me do a pause right there i'm discussing this video i'm discussing it i'm on stream i'm discussing it i want you to like hey guys pay attention to this guy right here because he's about to die or like i can use an arrow there's a guy right here uh but then i'm also still watching doors at at you know at the b door side or like look at my skin it is from that is really cool you can highlight the toggle you can delete you can undo and you can of course use a eraser to erase stuff and you can do a glow pen hey this guy is about to be dead you cannot do control z sadly but as you can see cpu total is still on 0 0.00 but it is currently using more gpu now that is cool that is one thing that you're not going to be seeing in obs that is amazing that is cool now i kind of want to head over to this program and record the uh, actually i would not be able to do that can i uh i kind of want to put my face into there so you're not probably gonna see me does that make sense hey give me a moment all right so i deactivated my webcam over at obs so now i am here in this platform and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna go over to custom and go into 1920 by 1080 because that should be the the default and cool I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to press OK. And now we're good. Now I am here. Hi. So I'm now on your screen. What else can I do? There are things here. You can see there are start virtual camera. You can do beauty effects and do virtual background. Have us try beauty effects. I'm going to press that. This window would pop up. And currently, there are no source for beauty effects. Please add the prism camera source if you wish to use. All right. Let's delete this one. And then let me add it again. Prism camera. Create different images by using beauty folders offered by Prism. Press OK. 
full, press OK again. I'm still going to use the C920. Now I'm going to do configure video and you can still do your manual uh, things. You can do your, your usual things, right? But what I can do now is I have access to the prism capabilities of effects, such as virtual background settings. Let's try that. I open it up. There is a new window that popped up. Now, as you can see, oh, hi, how are you doing? It is not perfect. It is not perfect. It is bad, but keep this in mind. OBS doesn't even have this. Um, there are a lot of different uh, for free. Once again, you can just remove the background. As you can, this, this one actually looks great. This one looks better. Let me press exit of it. And let me press OK. And let's see. Let me drag this window down to a smaller one right here. You know, hi guys. My name is Alan. Today we're going to be doing this. And it's only using a total of 8.6% of my GPU and 1.5% of my CPU. And it's doing a green screen without me having a green screen. Keep in mind, I also do have this audio visualizer that is using my processing power. Like, that is great. I like that. I like this feature of Prism Camera. But, you know, honestly, I would not use it just like that. So I want to know more. What can I do? There's office backgrounds. That is cool. You know, again, it is not perfect. It is trying its, its best to cut me out with the least amount of a performance impact. And, you know, I can do blurs on my background too. That is cool. Now let me do OK. Hi, I am now in my room. Now let's do the beautify effect. Uh, prism camera let me turn off uh the virtual camera for now i kind of don't let me do original oh i can do portrait blur with my own background i like that one because that one is kind of realistic in a way again it's using more of my gpu power now but again that is great that looks like my camera is hd as you can see now let's try to beautify effects that it has beauty effects let's do uh let's do cute well, it's like TikTok. You have a very small chin. And it looked warped. Wow. Small eyes. Big eyes. Let me do sharp. Cute. Let me reset cute. Off. On. Off. I have a smaller chin and a bigger eye. And I have a smooth ass skin. Though I already have a okay skin. Not really noticeable with the skin. Let's do the actual. Wow. Okay. Off. On. I look more Korean now. Off. On. That is that is cool. I, there's a lot of people who want to do this live. On their platforms, I got big eyes though. Kind of, kind of prefer my usual eyes. There you go. And I have manual control over my skin. Turn it off. Okay, can I compare it with the skin? Nose. Looks like I kind of have a small nose job. But the biggest thing here is in my chin. Look at that. Out from your software. Again, it's using more GPU power. I'm also doing the portrait background with all the tracking right here, but it is still working extremely fine. But there are a lot more features that is available for this one. The biggest one, once again, is of course, multi-streaming with this platform. You can literally add your platforms and then hit go live and you would be broadcasted, broadcasted to multiple platforms without you having to actually, you know, have it end the other platform or having plugins that will make you go live on those multi -pla multiple platforms. And that is just amazing. And again, the chat, you can literally have multiple chats. And I think when you're not live, they do a sample. Let me just go here into the chat window. Where is it? Clock widget viewer account. Press on chat. Press OK. There's multiple styles. Kind of like this one. I want a smaller font. There's filters available, same with OBS. As you can see, they have a sample on a big screen that would look great. 
it shows you like a, a, a sample as you can see of it shows you as well on Facebook, YouTube, Trovo, wherever they're coming from on your multiple live streams, which is amazing and great. And one more thing right here is that if I go and add another source, let's do one of those text templates that they have. Press OK. Press OK. Look at that. There's detailed settings. And you can add more. Sliding title. Elegant title. There's one for social medias. The lower thirds. That is this cool. Do one right here, Prism Live. Let's do a detailed settings. It should say my link, of course. So let me do at Alan Avila underscore. And it is updating a live. Press OK on that. Uh, let me actually make it bigger. Can I change it font size bigger? It also updates that. That is amazing. And boom, look at that. Of course, it's using more GPU power. But that is straight from the app. That is live from the app. That is without using any plugin. That is literally me, myself, the live stream. Controls goes the same as OBS. Put it right here. This is the one right on top. Boom. I literally got my own stream right here built in on this website, which is just bonkers without using any plugins straight up from the app. If I go to my task manager right here, it is currently using. 7%. So let me show it to you. This is this is it right now. It is using less than OBS, but of course it is not recording, it is not going live, and it, I'm currently using my OBS more, but you know, 6.6% again, not recording yet, just doing all the effects. Uh 0.1 MB. Let me pop in a main OBS. Like a normal OBS that does have a lot of sources, but none of them uh, has much going on right here. So it is just this one. It has a lot of different sources, cam, game, audio, monitor, but it's not recording as well. So let me just compare th with that. So right here, let me see. OBS Studio, the one, this one, it is this one right here, the 0% one. So it is using half, half, and it is using more disk because of what? An image? Uh, Wait, what? That is insane. Okay, it is using a lot. Oh, it is this one as well. The one that is recording. Okay, let me. 7.048. There's a lot of being used from this one. But it is almost just the same or half. It depends on what it's doing. But this one is doing a lot right now. Remind you guys, it is... Blurring my background, adding the audio visual, the chat. I got the text template from the top. And it is also playing the video right here that I just paused on loop. And that is that is amazing. That is cool. But before that, let me let me like look, it is smooth, it is great, it's literally OBS. But what do I think about it? Well, I got to go and transform, stretch myself to the screen to finish off this video. So what do I think about Prism Live? I think Prism Live is OBS, but of course better because it has multiple different plugins literally installed into it. But what if you don't like those plugins? You just want a normal OBS. Well, if that's the case, you should just install OBS. But if you want the features such as multi-streaming for free, by the way, you don't have to download plugins you don't have to download streamlabs and pay for it monthly or use restream again for free multi-streaming for free using this platform is available amazing <laughs> there's no limit to it i think there is no limit to it let me hop onto brave browser right here let me scroll down oh there is a limit to it a six maximum multi-streaming and 4k maximum resolution like Streamlabs with 1080p or Restream with 1080p 12 sites, but six is more than enough. You're probably going to do Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Provo, something like that. And there are a lot of engaging things that I've already shown you. Of course, there's more uh, than what I can show you in one video because we're running out of time right now. We're already 30 minutes in, 
but look, I just have gifts, guys. Come on. What? what, what? Like, you, you don't have those in OBS. Of course, you can just find them on the website and, of course, download it. But, you know, if you just want this platform to be used, you just want it to be a plug and go and you have a decent, powerful computer. I don't think this is a bad idea of trying out this application. But yeah, I think this is where I'm going to be ending the video here. Hopefully you did learn something new. Again, I would recommend this to everyone who wants to try out an OBS with plugins pre-installed. But if you want bare bones, you want to customize, you want stability, you want just bare bones, I would still recommend you to go with the actual normal OBS. Uh, that is also for free that you can get over at literally searching OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. Boom. Now, if you want to learn more about how to set up both Prism Live Studio and OBS, you can check out my OBS video because Prism Live Studio, when it comes to sources, audio mixer, everything, literally uses the frame same, uh, same framework. Uh, let me show you Prism Live Studio, OBS framework. Ah, there you go, Streamlabs. What does Oh wait, what? Wait, it says no? This one says yes. Oh, OBS engine, not the OBS framework. So it still has a little bit of optimization needs. Unlike OBS, it has been proven, tested, used by a lot of different people. So everybody knows the stability that OBS offers, but this one is still new, apparently using a different framework, but the same engine. So um, hey, that's a good thing. Now you know. But hopefully this video did help you if you do like the app and showed you what it can do. And um, I might put out a little bit of sample gameplay that I've recorded using this app uh, directly. So you can see a little bit of a performance that it has and what it can offer in an actual uh, show or something like that. But hey, again, my name is Alan. Hopefully you did learn a thing or two, especially this program. I was excited to try it out and I'm going to try more of it now. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. See you guys over to my next video here at Hawk Dive. Check out my articles and the other articles over at hawkdive.com. And um, yeah, have a nice day. Goodbye. Wait. <laughs>